Now Insta360, the one who is known for these cameras right here, the Go 2 as well as the Insta360 One RS and One R lineup are back again. And I say back again with a new 360 drone mount is because I actually reviewed their very first one back in 2020. And when they did release this mount, it was made for the Mavic Pro and Mavic 2 Pro. And as you can see here, when they released it, it was actually all custom 3D printed. We have a camera here at top. Another one here at the very bottom. I don't want to put it down because it's going to touch the bottom, but there's a camera here at the very top and bottom. And if you're familiar with the Insta360 cameras in general, it's basically taking one of these cameras right here and splitting it apart. Now Insta360 is back with what they're calling the Insta360 Sphere. And this new mount is designed for the Mavic Air 2 as well as the Air 2S frames. They basically took all the knowledge they got from this rig and made an actual molded piece that fits onto these drones right here with an integrated camera. As you can see, camera here up top, another one here at the bottom, and everything is all built in. We have the battery on one side as well as your recording module here on the bottom. There's actually an SD card built into it. Got the power button right there as well as the record button. Now who is this rig really designed for? It kind of reminds me about 360 cameras in general. There's definitely times where a 360 camera does make sense when out there shooting, but for me, as far as how I use 360 cameras, I will normally use it in conjunction with other cameras. Now when it comes to drones and 360 cameras, the idea behind this is to get some more dynamic types of shots, very similar to what you might be able to achieve with an FPV drone. However, there's definitely a big difference with the types of footage that comes out of it. While they're trying to mimic that, I think FPV drones in general have a much more fluid, more natural look to it. Here it's a little different because of the fact that you're actually doing reframing post-production and not necessarily flying it in a particular way. Now who does that benefit? It benefits people like myself that are normally GPS flyers. I have the Air 2 as well as the Air 2S and if you wanted to add in some more dynamic types of shots into your stories, that's when you might be able to drop this on there and fly just as you normally would as you're flying your Air 2 or Air 2S and then in post-processing you can grab that 360 footage that the drone is shooting reframe it and then export out specific types of clips to use in your story. First thing we'll talk about is the installation. This rig is now super simple compared to especially this one right here. All you have to do to install it is open that up, turn it over, line up the sensor holes. There's holes for your bottom sensors right there at the very bottom. And once you line those up, then you just have to flip the drone back over. And then there's a nice easy little buckle. And that is it, access to your light, your sensors here at the very bottom. And the biggest thing they fixed on this new setup here is that you don't have the issue of losing GPS like you did with this one right here. On this rig right here, it was covering up the GPS signal. So if you're out there flying, it would always switch from GPS to attitude mode or pretty much manual mode and you would lose GPS, which means if you lost GPS, the drone will kind of start floating and kind of hovering with the wind. So the biggest thing of here is that now you can reliably send your drone up in the air. I was able to take this out 1,000, 2,000 feet away. One big benefit of a system like this is that a lot of people would like to strap on 360 cameras to the drone and it's normally done by some sort of harness and something that's dangling down below. Here it is all integrated. So when you are flying this and when you open up all the footage in your studio app, it basically gives you an invisible drone because the way that the cameras are situated here and the way that the stitch lines happen, you actually cannot see the drone in all of your footage. Now, as far as camera specs go, we're still at the 5.7K, 360 degrees, of course, and your frame rates are up to 30 frames, so 30, 25, and 24. As far as aperture goes, 2.0 aperture, so nice wide open aperture, as well as the 7.2 millimeter equivalent lens, of course, that 360 lens. We have two of those, one on top and one on bottom. Not only will the camera shoot video, we also have photo capabilities here. We do have photos up to 6K resolution in photos. You are able 
able to shoot in JPEG and RAW, and there's also a bunch of different photo options you can use on this camera. We'll also talk about some of the limitations of that in the app in a bit. As far as color profiles, there are three of them, standard, vivid, and they also have a flat log profile if you wanna do a little more post-processing after the fact, but at least they have a few different ones right out of the gate. And as far as weight, let's drop this right onto my scale. We are at 193 grams. So of course you're gonna be adding that onto something like this, which is your Air 2S, and if I were to move that, we're at 785 grams total with this package. Now as far as battery of this rig, it's a 1050 milliamp battery. It takes about 100 minutes to charge this up, and it has the SD card right over here. I kind of wish that that SD card was another place because it's kind of funky how to pop that out, uh, but it does have an SD card slot right there, as well as the power and record. Another cool feature you could do in the studio app is AI tracking. So if you want to track a subject, you don't really have to actually follow the subject perfectly. You just have to follow them in a general direction and you can actually turn on AI tracking in the app and the AI tracking will actually move the camera around and track that subject that you selected. As far as charging goes, it is USB-C. Now, the one thing I did test is that I wasn't able to just plug this in and then pull my data, like pull my video from the card through here. So I believe it's just charging, but I'll double check that again because I did do it on two of my laptops. I, it will normally show up. Uh, I mean, if it, if it were, were to work, it would normally just show up on my desktop, but it didn't. So I think this might be charging only. You can't pull data from it. One thing to note, because of that extra weight, you're also gonna be decreasing your flight time. So one thing I was monitoring when I was out there flying is just checking your battery's level. What uh, Insta360 is saying, it'll reduce it about 20% or so. So just make sure that if you are flying, check your battery levels all the time. And also the drone will be a little bit louder. It will be a little bit louder up in the air because the drone is working a little bit harder to lift that extra weight. So the one thing that did change is when I was going out there, I would look for areas, kind of pockets to fly in. For instance, if there's a bunch of trees around, I would try to find a pocket, an opening. So I'd fly the drone straight up because I know that this camera right here would be able to get all of those trees, fly it straight through that way. And that's something you would never really think about doing with a camera like that. I flew over at the Loy Pier and same thing. I just flew the drone straight under the pier nice and steady. And then in the studio app, I was able to reframe that footage because of the fact it's shooting in 360, I'm able to see the top of the pier or the, the bottom side of the pier, as well as the water. And you're able to do just different reframing. You can make it look like the drone is spinning around where it's really not because it's just flying straight. Another different perspective you wanna think about too is that when you come up upon a building or a structure that's pretty high, What's cool is that you just bring the drone right next to it and then all you have to do is press up on your remote control and just fly the drone straight up in the air. And then once you open up in the studio app, you can use this camera to see your drone flying up. And then if you come back down, all you have to do is fly straight down. Then you can use this camera here and look straight down. So it kind of gives you those different illusions, those different effects that you would normally get if you were to do a dive with an FPV drone. You get something kind of similar to that with a rig like this. Now, when I first put the mount on, the one thing, as you can see here, once you put it down on the ground, it does sit kind of funky, kind of sit at an angle. So one thing I was like, is it gonna even fly properly? Is it balanced enough? But note that if it is sitting this way, once you take off, it'll just level back out. And you normally wanna have the drone just sit there. And all of my flights, once I had the drone hover and it kind of just settled in, it was just like flying the drone normally. There was no real balance issues with the platform. So here I have the lens cover on the cameras and you always wanna use these lens covers when you're transporting it, but they also come with lens guards, little guards that go on top of the lens. But either way, you're gonna to wanna to keep both of these and they also include a drone landing pad for you to take off and land from. You're always gonna to wanna to use something like this because of the fact that the camera does sit lower than the landing legs. So it's always gonna to touch the ground first and this soft landing pad definitely will help that out. And if you're wondering if you can hand catch and hand launch it, yes, you can. However, like I said, in my previous hand launch and hand catch videos, don't do that unless you are familiar with your drone. Because the app requires you to have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection for you to monitor what you see on the app, when you're out there flying, that distance away from your phone app won't connect. So you won't be able to necessarily see a preview of what you're seeing on camera. That's the reason why you'll still use the DJI Fly app to do all of your flying and just know that you're capturing everything 
in 360. However, if you want to try switching modes while you're up in the air, that's something you're not able to do. So if you wanted to go into photo mode while you're up there flying, you can't really do that because you have to have direct connection with the app and the drone. And if the drone is way up in the air, that Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connection as far as the app goes won't work. So you have to bring the drone back in, then you're able to switch out a couple of the modes. For instance, I went from video mode, then I reconnected it while it was actually still hovering, went into photo mode. And with photos, like I said, if you're, if you're out there flying, you can't actually see where you're flying and shooting. So if you wanna take photos while you're out there, the one thing you do is just switch it over to interval photo shooting. That way you'll just fly and the drone will automatically take photos every however seconds you designate to. I think I put it for like every three seconds, it'll just take a new photo. So there are some limitations to that. But like I said, if you're mostly focused around shooting video, that's what this rig is for. The one thing I do like in the app is a feature called Snap Wizard. What's cool about Snap Wizard is that once you open up your footage on your app, you're now able to see everything on your phone in 360. So what's nice about that is that if you just want to do some quick pans, you're able to do that on the phone. You have to swipe across the screen and then you can actually export that out quickly for something like social media. One tip before you get out there flying is the fact you want to make sure it's recording. Whether you activate it through the app or you press the record button here, make sure you see that little red light on there. Because if it's not recording, once the drone is up in the air, you're not able to connect to it via the app. So that's one thing to note is that you just wanna make sure you're recording because you would hate to go out there, film a bunch of things and come to find out that the drone wasn't recording anything. Overall, super impressed on how far they've come. This thing came out in 2020, so it's been about two and a half years or so since they came out with this one. This thing is completely redone and it's just nice that they've kept going with it. I mean, a lot of people thought that they just kind of stopped using it or stopped, uh, you know, kind of promoting this one. And they kind of went back to the drawing board and created this one. They fixed all those things that we had, all the issues we had with this one, especially the GPS one. You weren't able to fly this thing out there far because you would go right into attitude mode and it just wasn't reliable enough if you were out there flying and didn't know how to control it. You didn't want to put it out there great distances here you're definitely able to do that a lot safer. So if you're looking at adding some more dynamic types of drone footage to your overall story, the links to the Insta360 Sphere, of course, will be down below in the video description. As always, if you guys got some value from the video, a big like would be much appreciated. And of course, if you guys wanna see more stuff on Insta360, like the GoTo Insta360 ONE RS, I'll leave the links to all those videos down below in the video description. This is Alger Anastasio with FlightPath.com. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.